Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, this time with a four bar sized card using Trinity Stamps new Porta Hello <laughs> stamp set. I love the puns. I love, I don't know, this image just spoke to me. So I started with some Arches cold press watercolor paper. My original plan was to heat emboss this image. That's why I used my anti-static powder tool. In the end, I didn't end up doing that. I inked up and stamped this image multiple times with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. There is a lot of detail in this stamp and Arches watercolor paper, the cold press, has a lot of texture to it. Honestly, I should have went with the hot press Arches because it's got a smooth finish. I just, I struggle with that. It takes water differently. Unless you've like worked with it, it's just weird. So I don't reach for it. I was okay with it not stamping perfectly. I just inked it up and stamped it multiple times and got pretty much all of the detail. So I was fine with that. And then, like I said, I did not heat emboss. Shocker. Usually I heat emboss because it gives me those raised edges, keeps everything contained. But I just kind of worked a little more careful for once. This is super sped up in editing. Um, this is like 20 times faster than I actually watercolored this. I was using my Magello Mission Gold watercolors and, uh, doing two brushes. That was, this is a trick I picked up from Debbie Hughes a long time ago. I use one brush with just clean water and to like kind of pull out the color. And then the other brush is what I'm actually dipping into the watercolor. And it just helps to make the process go better, I guess. Yeah. I was adding layers. I took my time doing this, which is also not usually what I do. <laughs> I found this very therapeutic though. It was nice to just like sit down and watercolor this image. I think it took me a good, probably close to 45 minutes. And I enjoyed the whole process. I really love how this ended up turning out. So I did some layering not a whole lot, just pretty much the same colors. So like, you know, I did the red for the tops of the mushrooms, some like kind of browns for the bases. I used, you know, greens, of course, for the greenery. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the flowers, but in the end, I colored them yellow, like happy little yellow flowers. So once I got kind of everything colored with the watercolor, you know, roughly two layers, nothing too fancy. Um, and I wish I had my palette like on screen to show you guys. I, as usual, I was just in the zone and not really paying attention. But what I did was I took the red and I added a little bit of brown to it and a little bit of green to it to get a much deeper color. And that's what you see me adding right now. And that really just finished it off. It just gave it that depth and I could have left it here, but I went in with my white gel pen to add some highlights and that made me even more happy because... Of course, in my head, I'm thinking those, you know, little red mushrooms with all the little white dots on them. Kind of super Mario, but they actually exist in real life. So I went in with my white gel pen and just added highlights to the images, little dots and whatnot to the flowers, highlights to the little grass stems. Again, not really following any sort of um, line of, you know, light source or anything, just putting them wherever and then adding my little dots to the mushrooms and that just I think really finished this off and I just like how cute it just ended up making it and same thing I didn't cover them back in the day I would have more like evenly spaced everything you know and the, all the dots would have been the same size but then that would have defeated the whole purpose so I just added a few dots just here and there some larger some smaller good to go I was using my jelly roll 10 pen which I'll have linked with all the other supplies this is my favorite white gel pen. This one has yet to ever let me down. I'm now on my second or third one and it they just work fabulously. So use that to add all my little dots and whatnot. And then for my background, I have another piece of that same watercolor paper, the Arches Cold Press. And then I have one of the rectangle wafer dies that come in the four bar card and envelope die set. And I have it taped into place just to give me a visual guide because I'm going to die cut this piece when I'm done. So just to know where I'm going to put my watercolor. And I'm painting a ridiculously simple background. I'm just using green and then kind of a blue color. So I painted the green first and then I kept going kind of back in while it's all still wet with just a clean brush. Like the brush just has clean water on it to kind of lift off more of the color because I wanted the background to just be subtle, 
not doing anything too fancy. And then I'm going to go in with the blue. Now, because I left this wet, you'll see the blue and the green kind of start to run into each other, kind of back and forth. In the end, I was fine with it. If you don't want that to happen, let the first color you apply dry fully, and then you'll be good to go. But because they're both wet, as soon as they start touching, the colors start to mingle. So I kind of liked the texture it created, but again, if I didn't want that, I would have let the first color dry. But again, this background's mostly going to be covered once I get everything on this card, so it's not a big deal. And of course, I had to add some splatter. Had to get some splatter in there somewhere. So I added just the intent, more intense version, so less water, more color of the blue, same with the green. Splattered it, let everything dry, and then I die cut that piece with that rectangle with dye, and I also die cut the mushroom uh, background or main image with the coordinating wafer dye and then um, I haven't put away this huge roll of Mayert's twine that I've used in practically every recent video <laughs> so I wrapped that around a few times on my little panel here and then just like I show in my videos I use reverse tweezers I start my knot I use my reverse tweezers to hold it for me so I don't have to hold it with my pinky and give my you know fingers a cramp and then I can tie my bow and fiddle and do all those things before I remove those tweezers. It just makes life so much easier. And then I do have like an insanely old video on my channel. I'm talking like 14 years. I don't even know how many years. Long, long time ago. Um, tying ribbon. It's how to tie ribbon in a bow or something. Whatever it's called. Way back in the day. Same idea. So, got that tied. I put some big mama foam tape on the back of my image. And then I'm going to pop that into place onto this panel. And then the sentiment is from the same Porta Hello stamp set. And I, just, I love the punny sentiment. So it says, thanks so much. <laughs> and I had white heat embossed it on black cardstock. I die cut it with the coordinating little wafer die. And then I had this scrap of black cardstock. So I just die cut it more times with that same little sentiment wafer die. And I'm going to stack those layers together after I trimmed off one end. This way I can add the dimension to my heat embossed sentiment and I don't have to sit and fiddle with foam tape. That's one of the main reasons why I love coordinating wafer dies for sentiments. It just, it makes my life easier and it kind of gives it just a little extra something. So I had all those layers stacked together, stuck that onto my card front, and then added another round of Big Mama foam tape to the back of this panel. And because this foam tape is thin, it gives a little bit of dimension, but it doesn't add a ton of bulk. And then I have a piece of pattern paper that I die cut with another one of the rectangles from the four bar card and envelope wafer die set. And then my card base was just white cardstock that was cut to seven inches by five inches. And I scored it at three and a half. So this will be a three and a half inch by five inch four bar sized card. So I put my card base in my Misty. And I'm going to stamp that mushroom image again with Simon's Sprout ink, just a nice light green ink. And I can't like the, I just, the detail of this image, I just, I don't know. I love it. I just think it is so cute without being cutesy, even though you guys know I love cutesy, all the things. There was that other stamp set that was released with um, these images that I also wanted to use, but this one kind of won out. So anyway stamp the image with that green ink and then lined up another sentiment from the set and I'm going to stamp that with black ink and this one says I have so much room in my heart for you <laughs> again punny I love it so I stamped that with the Versafine Claire Nocturne ink so that finished the inside of the card and now I can adhere this panel to the card front you can't really see it in video and I'm not even sure if my pictures picked it up but those rectangle wafer dies that I used actually not just die cut but they also emboss like just a thin line along the perimeter as well it's subtle but it just gives a little extra something a bunch of Trinity's wafer dies do that and I love that it's just it's just nice you know without being distracting or anything like that so I did that everything's adhered and then I pulled out some cinnamon red hot uh, embellishment hearts also from Trinity Stamps and just put a couple of those on my card because you know gotta have my splatter gotta have some bling so arrange just a couple of those and I'm just going to adhere those into place with dabs of craft tacky glue and then once I get those adhered while that glue is drying I'm going to assemble the envelope because I used the four bar 
um, card and envelope wafer die set. I use the actual envelope wafer dies as well. So this card will have its own little matching envelope. And I use more pattern paper for that. Uh, I have, I'll link to like a random doodlebug stash. Again, I've mentioned this before. I hoard doodlebug paper and everything from doodlebug. <laughs> but I like using their 12 by 12 papers to make envelopes. So that's what I did. You cut the base once and then this envelope flap you cut die cut it twice and this time I decided to use my uh, bone folder and my score buddy just to reinforce the score lines the wafer dies do score the areas that you need to fold but it does help if you reinforce it it just makes things fold a little nicer so I reinforced all the fold lines so I've got everything just ready to go it's only a matter of adhering it I'm using liquid glue for this. I've shown this in other videos. You can use red line tape, score tape, anything like that. Just a good strong adhesive. I like using liquid glue because I'm just comfortable with it. And it gives me that, you know, few seconds of wiggle room to get everything lined up. And I'm also comfortable enough with the liquid glue that I don't apply too much. Because if you're not comfortable with it and you put too much glue on, you're just going to glue the whole thing closed. <laughs> so if that's the problem use yeah like a red line tape or a square tape the big round flap I don't put adhesive on I just leave it as is until it's time to like send this away and then I would adhere it you know so that finished off this card it was just fun technically somewhat quick and easy if you discount the time for the watercoloring but it was just I don't know there's something about this image and the sentiments and then this cute little polka dot envelope that just makes me happy so as always I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have links to all the supplies I used. I'll have picture links in the blog post as well. All that info will be in the description box below the video if any of you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting all the good things. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.